Um, so some colleagues and I, we got interested in all of the many, many, many corporate transgressions that we would see in the media that you could think of, you know, starting back as far as, you know, Michael Milken or thinking about Enron and thinking about Martha Stewart and um, all of the various individuals, high profile individuals that get a lot of media coverage for their transgressions. Let's just look at how people change their understanding of, of the crime or the wrongdoing as the status, the social standing of the wrongdoer changes. And what we found was you hold the crime constant, people make much more malevolent attributions for the exact same behavior when it's committed by a person that we think of as high social status than when, we think, when it's committed by a person of low social status. The same psychology that explains how we make sense of the most egregious crimes in society also can help us make sense for how we would respond to just an everyday mistake or transgression that somebody might make in the context of a job. So for example, I was talking to somebody who was um, making a presentation to some potential investors about um, a particular company that was being considered for investment. And it turned out in the course of the presentation, some mistakes in the um, reporting of the, past, the company's past earnings were raised. When people asked questions and they started to delve into the numbers, and they realized some of the numbers that they had been presenting weren't um, accurate. And the, the people recounting the story said that it was completely unintentional, but there was a perception because the person presented, making the presentation was a very high status individual in the firm, that this was something that may have been done deliberately on the firm's part as a way to encourage these people to actually make an investment. And what I thought was interesting about hearing that story was the kind of mistake that can happen every day, right? It's not, it's not insider trading, it's not, um, tax evasion, it's just somebody making a presentation, talking about their job, and that there's some error um, in the calculations, and the attributions that the audience was making about how this error came to be, they were very affected by the fact that the person standing there was a very high status individual. And so what a person might find as they advance throughout their career is that mistakes that were very much overlooked or explained away when they were starting their careers and lower status, all of a sudden they do the same thing when they're now a higher status, higher ranking individual, and the reaction that they get from their constituencies, their organization, the public, is now a lot different. And I think somebody could find themselves quite surprised by that, that yeah, this is a mistake, it's not great, but it's no different than the kind of things that have happened all throughout my career. And now, why this time? Why is there now so much attention? Why is everybody being so critical? I think the answer is that as we advance, the explanations that the observers of our behavior tell themselves change and they become more malevolent. They think of our behaviors as more intentional. They see us as more in charge. So what are the kinds of best practices for everybody, but for particularly high status individuals, to just undertake throughout their careers, never knowing when they might get the benefit, but knowing if they were ever to find themselves in a situation where a mistake or a wrongdoing had been committed, that these ongoing behaviors would build up some goodwill. And in particular, what we're looking at is what are the actions on the part of individuals that cause them to be perceived as very um, warm, affiliative, concerned with other people? That's really the stereotype about high status individuals that really hurts them when it comes to this situation that I've been describing is they're just not perceived as being concerned enough about other people in relation to how concerned they are about themselves. And so they're seen as the kind of people who would deliberately transgress if it were to their advantage in some way. We don't have a great definitive answer yet to say these three or four things are guaranteed to change the images of high status people. What we can say at this point is that um, changing your, um, being aware of, your, of your, the way you are perceived by other people is particularly important, that it will change over time as you advance. And that as you advance, you will need to take greater and greater steps to convince those that observe you, particularly those that observe you from afar, not necessarily your closest allies or coworkers, but those that observe you from afar, that you are very concerned about the welfare of other people, that you are warm, that you are charitable, that you are selfless, that you are all these things. And the exact way that a given high status person could do that at this point, I don't necessarily know. But it's just important for people as they advance to keep in mind that that's something that you're going to have to work on convincing the public, you know, changing the public perception to see you as a person who is very giving in that regard. Because it's that perception that will protect you if a transgression or mistake ever befalls you.